Welcome to Currents Up Close and another in a series of programs about education in Cedar Falls. And today it's a great pleasure for me to introduce to our viewers Bill Close. And Bill does not need a lot of introduction, especially to lots of hundreds and hundreds of former students. Uh, Bill became a, uh, an art teacher in the Cedar Falls Community Schools in 1968. Uh, all the time, all of his experience was at the junior high school level was part-time at Holmes and Pete Junior Highs his first year and then became full-time at Pete Junior High uh, for the next many years until his retirement in 2002. 2001, I 2001. believe. 2001. <laughs> so a long career as an art instructor at Pete Junior High. So again, I, I, uh, I welcome Bill to the program. And uh, after his so-called retirement, uh, Bill has been very involved with, with continued work in the art field, uh, doing many different works uh, of, uh, of scale. And he got the idea, as after he looked back and reflected on his career and always thought about 23 years of doing mega sculptures for Pete Junior High with his students. And anyone who has lived in the community in that period of time or was a student uh, in Bill's class uh, had some connection uh, to the, the projects. And Bill had the idea focused in on, uh, I think I'll create a book. Everyone thinks about that, uh, <laughs> yeah. but Bill did it. Uh -huh. And he had numerous pictures, and the result is the book Big. Uh, and so Bill is here today to tell us about that. But as we start, I want to say one additional thing, that Bill has produced this book also with the long-range plan, and very short long-range plan because it's going to be implemented next year, of taking the proceeds beyond his cost and creating art scholarships. And that will, those art scholarships, talk, Bill will talk about throughout the program. But Bill, uh, thank you so much for coming with us today and yeah. sharing about Big and all the experience. We could do several hours on this, but we have a half hour. So go ahead and, and tell us a little bit of background, Bill. Well, thank you, Floyd, for this opportunity uh, to talk about this book. And uh, you mentioned the book. It's been, I can't say it's a lifelong dream, but it's been a dream since I retired that I wanted to, to uh, put together a book about those wonderful years, 23 years of Pete Jr. High Mega Sculptures. And uh, uh, for about five years, I was gathering photos and information and uh, trying to get this book together. And then this year, it finally happened. Uh, I'd like to talk about, there's four reasons why I wanted to do this book. And the, the first one is that people in the community of Cedar Falls uh, most of them, a lot of them, if they're uh, longtime residents, they remember the sculptures and they can mention their favorites. They'll talk about the big camera or the cruise ship or the puppy love, the wagon. Uh, and it's wonderful that they could remember those products, but what they could never see or were never privy to see was the process behind the construction, how the kids work together. And I want people to be able to share that those magic moments because it was incredible uh, to see these kids work. I, I had them scattered all throughout the building and I couldn't be every place at once. So, And I will not say that every time I came across a group working they were 100% on task, but most of the time they were. They were self-governed and if somebody was messing up, people in the group would uh, remind them. So that I wanted people to see the process. Uh, I wanted to be able to look back and contact former students and get their reflections on their experience. Because a lot of them, they're 45 years old, they have kids in junior high, high school now. And I wanted to see as, uh, to get their uh, reflections as adults on their experience as junior high kids. To see, was this just all fun and games or did they actually learn something? <laughs> and uh, I'd actually, I'd like to read just one quote. The, the book has 60 quotes by students. Uh, talking about their experience. And there's, there's several. I, we can't read them all today, but there's one by Melissa Clark Quinn. And it says, My memories of the things I made at Pete Junior High are some of my brightest. I helped build the boom box and the sets for Bye Bye Birdie and a talent show. I fin fondly recall we ate lots of cheap pizza and drank bottles of soda from the machine in the teacher's lounge. We worked hard and laughed a lot. I could go on and on about the lessons, great and small, about art and people and the awkwardness of growing up, but it's more important to offer my gratitude for what I received and to pass along to others the desire to create. And I think uh, that's a pretty profound statement. 
She captured it all, didn't she? She, yeah. she, for a, a, she spoke as a junior high student there at the beginning <laughs> about eating pizza and drinking pop. <laughs> but in the end, it was she instilled in her a desire for creativity, and that's yeah. one of the values. Great. Well, uh, Bill, what, what led you to, to even think about this project? You've been teaching for a number of years, hard at junior high level, and a successful career, and, and a great program. But then, why did you decide to embark on this with something really, I want to use the term big, but a, a huge undertaking on your part? Uh, my high school and college uh, undergrad years were during the 60s, and that's when uh, pop art culture was probably at its peak. Mm -hmm. And there was an artist by the name of Klaus Oldenburg who creates giant sculptures similar to our mega sculptures all over the world. There are three of them in the Midwest, the Crusoe Umbrella in Des Moines, Spoon and Cherry Sculpture in Minneapolis, and the giant shuttlecocks at the Kansas City Art Institute. And those fascinated me. Uh, so at some point in time, I thought I want to try to do something like this. And I had an opportunity in 1979, uh, Dorothy Garth, the head of our food services in Cedar Falls Schools, came to me and said, Bill, uh, we would like you to help decorate the cafeteria for National School Lunch Week. And I thought, well, I didn't even know there was such a thing as <laughs> National School Lunch Week. And at the same time, I had a ninth grade art class, primarily boys, and uh, they were great guys, a lot of athletes. I got along with them really well, but I never felt early in the school year they were buying into my art curriculum like I hoped they would. So I thought, I'm gonna try something with these guys. And at first I said, you know, the cafeteria ladies would like us to make colorful posters for the cafeteria. And their eyes kind of rolled and there were some groans. I said, but you know, I'd like to take it a step further. Uh, I said, how would you guys feel about designing and building the world's largest school lunch? And right away, I think I had those boys in the palm of my hand. We, uh, we divided up into teams. We had the green bean team, the milk carton team. <laughs> uh, they were all assigned a, a portion of the sculpture to build and uh, it was so large that it filled the entire cafeteria stage at Pete Junior High. The kids had fun. Uh, so the picture was, we're looking at here is actually that on the is stage. the actual lunch. And, and uh, Bill, that initial sculpture was really the only one indoors, if I that, recall. Is that, that correct? That was uh, we put it on the stage of the cafeteria. It stayed there for a couple of weeks during National School Lunch Week, and then a lot of the kids uh, they took. When these projects are done, if kids want to take home a section of it, they do. So the, the, the hamburger, the milk carton, the green beans, they all went separate directions throughout <laughs> Cedar Falls and probably stayed in somebody's garage or basement for several years. <laughs> well, then, then you uh, embarked on an outdoor, your next, uh, next undertaking, or at least a future undertaking. We've got a picture here of the, uh, the pencil. The, uh, and uh, how did you come about that when, idea? When the school year rolled around the following year, it would be 1980, uh, 80, 81. With the success of the school lunch, I said, this is something that I, I, I see a future in this project. I want to, there's a, just a lot of educational value. Uh, so we uh, decided National School Lunch Week would be a, an appropriate uh, venue for building a sculpture, and we wanted to display it outside. So I always asked the class for ideas. They tossed out a giant basketball locker, school books. We settled on a number two yellow pencil because uh, every student in Iowa takes the Iowa basic skills test, knows they need a number two pencil. <laughs> the, the key thing here was uh, in order to make it uh, large enough, we couldn't do the whole pencil. It would have been over a block long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we decided we have to break it in half and we want to stand it up. So that's when I went to our principal, Bob Messer. And this is when all these mega sculptures could have come to an abrupt halt. Because <laughs> I told Bob, I said, we've got this giant pencil uh, that's the good news. It looks really good. The bad news is we need to dig two holes in the front lawn of the school, three feet in diameter, four feet deep. And it would have been easy for him to say, Bill, I don't think we can do that. But Bob was very agreeable. All he said was, make sure you, you'll fill in the holes when you're done. I said, we'll fill in the holes and we'll reseed the grass. And actually that paved the way for the next 20 some mega sculptures that we put outdoors. Oh, and also we know in the book, uh, there's a picture of, er, at least one picture of every one of the 23. Yes. And we don't have time to show them all this morning, uh, but certainly people can uh, get a hold of the book, and we're going to talk about how they can uh, acquire the book uh, in uh, upcoming um, uh, portions of the program. 
But that then, uh, you moved into a couple of additional ideas. How did you keep coming up with these ideas? For example, the next one we're going to talk about is a camera. The, the third sculpture we did was a master padlock. And yes. that was the first one that it got some national press. And the president, or the sales representative from Nebraska, saw that padlock and contacted the president of his company. And they sent somebody down. And they wanted to know if they could buy it for professional or for uh, mm -hmm. pr promotional purposes. That was the first one that uh, I said, we can't take money, but we can. Uh, they ended up buying some art supplies. Mm -hmm. and They loaded the lock up and the keys, and they hauled it off to Milwaukee, their headquarters. And we began to realize then that, that if we want to continue to do this, uh, the sculptures are getting bigger and more complicated. We needed sponsors. And the community stepped forward. Uh, you mentioned the camera. That was Porter's Camera Store. Uh, set forward and ag agreed to help with the expenses. And I think the camera was one of the most incredible sculptures we did. If you you're, were looking at the photo now, of the, everything was done in scale. The photographs that leaning against the wall were done in scale. If I could just take a minute, this image that I see right here is very significant, I think. We had uh, the strobe flash unit was too big and heavy for us to lift on top of the camera and mount it. One of the students said, well, my dad's a fireman. Maybe the fire department would come and help us. And I said, I, that's a long shot, but we'll give it a try. I called the fire department. And within five minutes, they were up at Pete Junior High with their big ladder truck. Not only the truck, it, and this image, that's Jerry Llewellyn, the fire chief at that time. And Jerry Llewellyn's the one that attached the, the ladder to the strobe and guided it into place. And uh, that's the beginning, I think, of really an indication of the level of a community involvement and pride that the whole city of Cedar Falls was beginning to take in the construction and display of our sculptures. It seemed like any time you had a, a specific need, someone in the community stepped someone up. Would, in fact, would. we're moving to the paint can and rollers. And uh, we even had a connection there, and tell us a little oh, bit Oh, this about is that. a fun story, too. This was a year that I had no idea. I always try to have an idea at the beginning of the year, and we weren't coming up with anything. Uh, so one of the students said, my dad works at Diamond Vogel Paint Store. He said, maybe they'll sponsor us. So he came back and said, yes, my dad will, the Diamond Vogel will help fund this, but we have to do something related to uh, the paint industry. So... Uh, the kids came up with this idea. We we're going to have giant paint roller or paintbrush, but we're going to kind of play on our school spirit. The color of the paint is Tiger Stripe Primer, and the other one was Tiger Paw. And the interesting thing here is somebody said, wouldn't it be fun if we painted a red stripe on the grass? So I had the kids bring all of the red paint they could find, uh, tempera paint, powdered paint, uh, latex, barn paint, any red paint. We th poured it all into a garbage can, stirred it up, and with brushes and rollers, we started to paint the grass green or red with uh, black tiger paws in it. Well, the kids got down to the sidewalk. They crossed the schoolyard, and they said, should we go on? I said, let's keep going. We got paint left. So they crossed the sidewalk, crossed the beading out into the street. They said, should we keep going? I said, keep going. It was right then that we noticed a police car approaching with its lights flashing. And I realized, you know, I did not have permission. <laughs> I hadn't asked for it or received permission to paint the street red. <laughs> and I thought we were in trouble. I told the kids, uh, let me handle this. I'm the adult here. And uh, so before I could even speak, the police officer rolled his window down. And I was about to apologize. And he said, he said, I've called another car. We're going to have another squad car come and block the street at the other end. And I'll block this end until you're done. And we'll stay here till the paint dries. I thought, well, this is just the coolest thing. We've got the police department on our side now. So you got uh, the fire department, the police department. Fire department, police department, and there were several others. I don't know if we'll have time to mention them all, but uh, CFU. Again, a great community connection. CFU came and we did the big bicycle. They're the ones that tethered it so it wouldn't fall down. Bill, uh, before we go on the break, and we're going to mention this again, the purpose of the project, of course, is to complete the book, which you did, and any proceeds would go to the Cedar Falls Community Schools Foundation. We'll establish a, a scholarship for art students. So tell us about that process a little bit. I, my teaching career, I was blessed to work with, a, with a, a fellow artist by the name of Ron Street. And I loved Ron Street dearly. 
and we, we, we came from different ends of, uh, of the world, uh, but we blended into a, a really, what I think was a pretty positive, powerful working team. Uh, we lost Ron a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to establish a scholarship fund and it's called Smart Start. It's the Bill Close, Ron Street Art Scholarship and it's intended for a Cedar Falls student graduating who would like to go into art education as a major. We'd like to carry on this uh, lineage of, of, of fine art teachers coming out of the Cedar Great. Falls school Great. system. As a means of full disclosure, I'm president of the Cedar Falls Community Schools Foundation, <laughs> and we give countless scholarships, uh, really terrific, and this is only going to add and enhance I, to the scholarship I going so. to students I, at Cedar Falls It's, High it's a way for this book to have purpose and, uh, and carry on through Very good. The After years. the break, we'll come back and talk more about big <laughs> and mega sculptures uh, in the career of Bill Close. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. Welcome back to Currents Up Close. In the second portion of the program, and reintroduce my, my guest, Bill Close, a terrific art teacher during his experiences with Cedar Falls Community Schools at Pete Junior High School, and the originator uh, of the mega sculptures at Pete Junior High, and created a book called Big. And uh, we've been talking about the book in the first half of the program, but Bill, uh, what about the logistics of this book? Most people say, I want to write a book, I want to complete a book, Tell us about your story. Well, I, as I, I may have mentioned earlier, I for five years I had been gathering photos and wanted to put this book together. But what I did not have was the computer knowledge, the ability to Photoshop and transfer images. Uh, there's a company in Denver, Iowa called JNR Reproduction, and that's who they do my G clay prints of my paintings and pastels. And from time to time, I had mentioned to them that I wanted to do this book. And could they help me with the photoshopping? They gave me the name of Jerry Greer. And Jerry Greer is a retired instructor from Hawkeye. He's an artist, uh, a working uh, professional photographer who has done a couple of books for other artists, Dean Schwartz and Potter. And they showed me his book and I said, boy, this is just what I want. I met with Jerry Greer and he got very excited about the project. It was in the winter months. He wanted a project to do. So he and I worked together three days a week for five or six hours a day from, we started in January, uh, and we met our deadline at the end of March of putting this book together. And the way we would do it is I would design the pages of the book and pick out the photographs, and then we would meet and he would put the photographs into the book on the pages, and uh, we would add the text, we would add the student quotes, uh, and that process has continued. Uh, we had a lead page, we had the picture of the big sculpture, then opposite of the lead page is always an anecdotal story that tells a, a, a story about how that was, was selected. Uh, just uh, some interesting information the public would like to view, to know about those sculptures. Uh, all that was, uh, was compressed onto a, a memory stick and sent to a company in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, their actual printing was done in China, I found mm -hmm. out. So, <laughs> so this book was printed in China and, uh, and then shipped back to the United States. We have a thousand copies of this book available. So. And, and that, uh, for example, uh, you're going to, to, you've been talking to several community groups and, uh, yes. uh, and have books, people want to buy the books already. How can a person uh, uh, get a hold of a book? Uh, 
the, the easiest way is to email me at closequarters at q.com and then we'll communicate. I'll get your address and I can, the, the cost of the book is $23, mm -hmm. which I think is a reasonable, it's a very nice hardbound, Excellent full book. color book. Uh, and then we'll, we have to add tax and uh, if we have to mail the book, then there'll be some shipping <laughs> involved. Uh, locally, Barn Happy is a really nice uh, uh, local business that's going to care, cover the book, sell the book, and also Gallery 106 on the Parkade. Uh, a young woman by the name of Corey Sink has, has opened a gallery and is doing quite well. And uh, right. I thought that would be a good place to get people interested in art and will come and into her gallery. And you're doing a lot of... Uh, 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 speaking to uh, or clubs and organizations, community groups, and, uh, and sharing your story, and then you're taking orders at that time. Taking in fact, orders. you have the books. Uh, if someone buy it, wants to buy a book, it's there. It's going to be ready, uh, ready it's to go. Ready to and, go. Uh, we'll be at Sturgis Falls for years to come. I have uh -huh. a thousand books to sell. Right. So. And you'll have a booth set up uh, <laughs> yes. on uh, Sundays, I believe, of the craft or the, right. the uh, craft show yep. area. Sturgis Falls so will that's be a great. good place. So, and uh, anything going beyond your costs will go into that scholarship fund, the Smart Art Scholarship, and that'll be just great. Yes, it will. Well, let's go back to some of the uh, uh, really highlights, and we're going to next one we're looking at here is the the bicycle and. And uh, uh, when you did this, bicycling was, was uh, uh, really uh, coming in vogue again. And now it's just mushroom sunset time. And we know what a huge uh, uh, impact the bicycle industry has had. So let's go back to why yeah. you thought about doing the bicycle and, and what are the results of some of that project. This was, uh, this, the bicycle was my favorite uh, sculpture just because of the, it was so intricate. Mm -hmm. uh, the kids came up with the idea of doing a bicycle because everybody, they all like to bike. So I went to Russ Clark at Europa Bike and Ski and asked him if he would, could help us. And he, he was more than willing. He gave us a bicycle to use as a model. It was an $800 carbon alloy bicycle. At I said, that time was really something. That was a lot of money. It scared me to death. I said, Russ, we're going to take this thing apart. I said, the kids will be measuring every little section of this and then uh, we'll be enlarging it to scale. And he said, well, that's fine. Just don't scratch the frame because that'll, that'll rise. I said, oh, thank you, Russ. That's not what I wanted to hear. But he was very cooperative. Uh, he supplied the funds. And his, this bicycle sculpture is the first one that pretty much had a life after we were done with it at Pete. He put it in front of his store. Right. And he's got a great quote in the book. He, uh, he said, I could have parked 17 elephants in front of my store and it would not have attracted as much attention as this bicycle. Mm -hmm. He said, I had parents and grandparents coming to take pictures with their kids <laughs> of the bike. So, And that happened a lot during your displays at Pete as well. People oh, would lots. Come by with a lot it, of this became... We moved uh, the timetable. I always used to do it in the fall, mm -hmm. in the early years, and we thought that in the spring was a better timetable for us because we wanted it up during graduation mm -hmm. because a lot of families, sure. a lot of people have families from out of town and they could come and view it. So we'd start right after spring break. We'd work for six weeks, and the, it worked out really well. You had another quote, great quote from a student, a former student, uh, Jamie. Uh, I believe Jamie Seitz. Uh, Jamie Seitz. And uh, that really is, a, again, captures the cooperative learning aspect that you talked about. So what about that quote? I'll read Jamie's quotes for you. Uh, Getting chosen to work on the mega sculpture was a huge honor at Pete Junior High. You knew that you were trusted to work hard and smart, take the project seriously, and become part of a team that made this incredible, larger-than-life piece of art that the entire school was proud of. We learned skills that I doubt I would have learned anywhere else and certainly not while having as much fun. But more importantly, we were made to feel like we had ownership over the project and that every job was just as important as the next and that we were capable of doing any of these jobs. Even though we were just kids, I got to help on the Godzilla project, the Shaquille O'Neal shoe project, <laughs> and I still have a piece of the brick wall we built for Godzilla stashed away in my basement. Great, great And quote. This, this is a young woman now who has a family of her own. Right, right. In and fact, I, she's, I think she's going to have her class reunion yes. this year or something in just a so. few years ago. 
then you moved into the torch, and this was really another project that uh, kind of coincided with the national and international uh, news at the time. In fact, we had a torch run through Cedar Falls. That's and right. We were involved with that. So tell us a little bit about the torch project. The the torch run was uh, the Olympic torch was a was what the kids selected uh, to do that year because they were, you know Olympics were very uh, hot topic, and we designed this. Uh, this sculpture to be viewed primarily at night. I mean, you could see it during the day, but at night it was all lit up and it was really quite spectacular. Uh, the torch run was scheduled to run through Cedar Falls, but it was not scheduled to go past Pete Junior High. And the kids thought, well, this sure would be cool if it would run in front of our school. So we had a group of three or four students assigned and their job was, was to write letters. They wrote letters to the mayor, they wrote letters to Senators Grassley and Harkin and uh, on behalf of Pete Junior High, we had to get permission from the United States Olympic Committee and the International Olympic Committee to change the route, because right. it had been established <laughs> years in advance. Uh, and through that letter writing campaign, we got the job done, and not only did the torch run pass in front of Pete Junior High that day, the exchange took place in front of Pete, and we had hundreds of people Huge Elementary kids were let there. out I early, remember, yeah. and we That's had great. Coke stands and refreshment <laughs> stands. It was an event. We had the Olympic theme blasting from loudspeakers. It actually it was, came right through Cedar Falls uh, City Hall after you, you know, were down yeah. at Peach Junior High. So it was well, Bill, fun. we're going to move along. We've got uh, several that we'd like to show again. Uh, one is Puppy Love, and uh, what uh, what uh, was the uh, rationale behind doing uh, a wagon with a puppy? Well, the, the kids brought in a wagon, and they wanted, they thought the wagon would be a, a really fun project. And, and I agreed, but we didn't have a sponsor. I said, we, got, I said, we can't afford, the art budget won't allow us to do this. So uh, a local veterinarian, Dr. Kent Mealy, commanding man of a clinic, stepped forward and said he would pay for it. So that's how, after we built the wagon, we added the puppy. All right. And, uh, and we're going to go to another one, uh, the, uh, and I think whether I had out of place or not, the cruise ship, uh, and maybe I, yeah, the next one is the cruise ship, and this is a huge undertaking as well. This was the... This is at Pete Junior High, dwarfs the side of the Pete Junior High. We camp. covered the whole building. It was over <laughs> 120 feet long. We covered the cafeteria. It's the, we wrapped the building in Tyvek, turned inside out. Uh, and uh, this one just got a lot of, a lot of attention. Okay, uh, Bill, in, in our remain, we have another quick slide of a birthday cake, which again was a, a, great, uh, a great project underway. And you had another quote here from uh, a student, and why don't you read that one? This is A.J. Elliott helped with the birthday cake. Many of the things I remember about working on the birthday cake are now through my older and wiser eyes tied to life lessons. Responsibility, leadership, and accountability are just a few that come to mind. I don't remember exactly how many candles were on that cake. It seemed like roughly a million. Right. Yeah. Bill, thanks so much. And people can get a hold of this book through uh, your email address. Repeat that again. Yeah. Yes, it's closequarters at q.com. All right. I need to mention one other person right. before we sign off, We're and done. that is Jean Melik. Yeah. She kept all of the photos and was responsible for right allowing this book to happen. Okay, Bill Close, thank you so much. There's just so much, as I said, we could do hours and hours I on know. this program, it's but uh, a terrific uh, thank job. Thank you for, for the you. opportunity. And, uh, thank you for being on the program. It was fun.